Hi, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the deciduous maxillary second molar. So these are the models of the deciduous maxillary second molar. This is a right deciduous maxillary second molar and this is the left deciduous second, deciduous second molar. So these teeth, they emerge into the oral cavity around the age of 29 months and the root, it is completed by the age of 3 years. Around 11, 10 to 11 years, this tooth, it is exfoliated, which is also known as shedding. And this tooth, it is replaced by the maxillary second premolar. So this tooth has a grinding function. Along with the other molars, this tooth performs grinding of food. So, uh, now we will discuss the morphology of the deciduous maxillary second molar from each aspect. So, this is the buccal aspect of the deciduous maxillary second molar. This is the mesiobuccal cusp, which is pointed, and this is the distobuccal cusp. So both cusps, they are nearly equal in size and development. The, in between these two cusps, mesiobuccal and the distobuccal cusp, there's a faint developmental line or depression in this area. So here there's a faint developmental line or depression. The crown of this tooth, it is larger and overall the size of this tooth is slightly larger as compared to the deciduous maxillary first molar. And so just below the cemento enamel junction, the roots, they divide into three. This is a mesial root distal root and palatal so all three roots they are visible from the buccal aspects aspect the roots of these teeth they appear more slender and longer as compared to the deciduous maxillary first molar this is the lingual aspect of the tooth so here there are two cusp this is a mesial lingual cusp and the distolingual cusp which is rounded so in, su in some to in some of the specimen a, a, a supplementary or a fifth cusp is associated with a mesiolingual cusp here the mesiolingual cusp there, there is no supplementary or fifth cusp is present in this model but in specimens there are there is fifth cusp that is associated with the mesiolingual cusp. Like the buccal aspect, a developmental groove is present between the two lingual cusp. You can see here a faint developmental groove is present between the two lingual cusp, mesiolingual and the distolingual cusp. A lingual developmental groove is there. All three roots, they are visible from the lingual aspect. This is a palatal root, mesial root, and the distal root. The lingual root, it is larger and thicker as compared to the other two roots. It is important to tell you that the, mes the lingual root is the largest, then the mesial root, and the smallest root is the distal root so this is the mesial aspect the the crown and the root it has a more more molar like outline and it is because of more buccolingual dimension and because of the well development of the roots in this uh, model only two roots are uh, two two cusps are visible this is the mesiobuccal and this is the mesiolingual cusp in the specimen where uh, there is a supplementary or fifth cusp a fifth cusp is also visible this ridge is the mesial marginal ridge that connects the mesiobuccal cusp with the mesiolingual cusp this is the curvature of the cervical line and cervical line curvature it is less and it is towards the crown surface. So this is the distal aspect of the tooth. 
and the buccal angle width and overall the buccal angle dimension it is slightly less as compared to the mesial aspect and because of this convergence part of the buccal and the lingual aspect they are visible from the distal aspect overall the distal buccal cusp and the distal lingual cusp they are slightly smaller and they are more rounded as compared to the mesial cusps the cervical line it is nearly straight as compared to the curvature of the cervical line mesially now from this aspect all three roots they are visible this is the distal root this is the mesial in the background this is the mesial root and this is the palatal root or sometimes referred as the lingual root uh, because the mesial uh, distal root it is small that's why in the background the mesial root it is visible the tooth it has four well developed cusps this is a mesiobuccal cusp mesiolingual cusp distobuccal cusp and the distolingual cusp The occlusal surface it has uh, three fossa. This fossa is the central fossa. Just adjacent to the ridge, there's a small fossa, and this is the mesial triangular fossa. And a small fossa is there that is the distal triangular fossa. There's a groove that crosses the occlusal surface, and this is known as the central developmental groove. From the central developmental groove, a buccal groove and the lingual groove, it crosses the occlusal surface. There are some supplementary grooves that are not quite visible in this uh, model. Now, uh, there is a ridge that is known as the oblique ridge. So, this, this there's a raised ridge that runs from the mesiolingual cusp to the distobuccal cusp. It unites and it runs obliquely. This is the oblique ridge. Uh, a supplementary cusp is uh, absent uh, in this model, but in, in specimens, there is a supplementary cusp over here on, associated with a mesiolingual cusp. So this tooth has, morphologically, this tooth has a lot of similarities with the maxillary permanent first molar. So this is all about the morphology of the deciduous maxillary second molar. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, ask in the comments below. Do check out the links in the description of this video. Again, thank you so much and stay blessed.